Okay, so now we're on to part two, which is more interesting than setting up a form, that's for sure. So we're going to set up the entity framework now, and in this section, we are going to, if I just uh, enable the PowerPoint, we're going to set up the entity framework by installing the entity framework. Uh, we'll create the DB context class that's key to this whole thing. Um, we're going to update our app config file, which holds our connection string to our database, and we're going to enable migrations. Okay, so we're back in our, our project then. So the first thing we actually want to do is go up to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager Console. And you want to type install package entity framework. Hit return. Cool. So that looks like it was successful. I just like to go up to references and I like to check that we have entity framework, entity framework SQL uh, server, and then there's also this system component model data annotations that should be added as um, part of your references. Okay, so now we're going to create our DB context class. So I just like to keep these classes in a separate folder. So I'm going to add a folder. I'm just going to call it model. You don't need to do this, but I, I just like to keep my model classes separate. And I'm really saying that the DB context class should stay in there. So we select add just a regular class. And we'll call it taskmaster DB context, but we'll just abbreviate it to TM. Uh, TM DB context. There we go. And in our references, we want to make a reference to system data entity. And we want to inherit from DB context. And that's all we're going to do on that just now. More on that later. And then the next thing we want to do is go into our um, app config file. There we are. And just after here, we want to put in a connection string property. Connection strings. And this is this is what I love about uh, the IntelliSense dropdown. It adds it adds stuff in for you here. Now. Importantly, we want to name it exactly the same name as our DB context class. You don't have to, but it just makes everything work a lot more smoothly. So name it in the same, give it the same name as your DB context class. It'll make life so much more easier for you. Okay. And then our connection string. So we're going to be connecting to uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server. So first of all, we're going to say what our data source is. And I will have to copy and paste this text. So if you just bear with me, here's my instance of SQL Server. Oh, I've opened it twice. So good, I opened it twice. Uh, so th this is the string I want. So this is my, there's my PC name and there's the instance name. So I just want that. Yours will of course be diff different to mine. I'll just open it up as well. So data source. We'll just paste that in. And then I just want to uh, make sure I'm putting all the right stuff in. Yep, okay. So semicolon, initial catalog. Now that's basically the database that we are going to effectively create in our instance of SQL Server and it's the go-to database that isn't there yet. So um, I'm just gonna call it something. I'm gonna call it Taskmaster. And if you go to, go to our SQL Server, I've got only got a database in there called Sandbox. So there's nothing there yet. And that's important just to, um, important just to bear that in mind. I'm gonna set security type to integrated security. 
So that just means when we connect to SQL Server, we're just going to use my Windows login account. It's all linked together. I'm an administrator on my PC. I'm an administrator on SQL Server. So it's just going to use that account. So we'll set that to true. And then we'll just set the provider that we're going to use. Now, just sorry, stepping back to security, you may need to provide um, different credentials or username and password, and you can encrypt all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that. I'm just keeping it nice and simple. Um, but you may need to change how your application connects if you use um, SQL Server accounts or even dedicated Windows accounts. And then the last attribute we want to put in is provider name. And I'm going to cheat. Oh, actually, no, I made a mistake here. I'll just take that out. Provider name is a, here we go, it's a separate attribute. And um, we're going to be using system data SQL client. Now, hopefully, that's correct. I might have to come back and check if. Um, that I've not made a mistake, but that looks good. So basically, again, we've just added this to our app config file. It's a connection string. Give the name, same name as your DB context class. It just makes everything work a lot uh, seamlessly. And then the main um, main attributes we really want to look at are these these ones here. So it tells us our what we're connecting to, what our initial catalog is going to be, and, and what type of security we're using, and the provider that we are using to connect to. And then the last thing we do to finish our setup and uh, is to go back to package manager console and then just type, actually we'll clear the screen. So CLS clears the screen. Any of you who've done basic programming will be familiar with CLS. And we just want to enable migrations. Now migrations, I mentioned them previously in the introduction, they are what facilitates or what allows us to translate or move our code classes into the database, so you actually have to enable that. I'm not sure why they, they've actually specified that as a, a specific step, but they have anyway, so you have to do it. So there's a few checks. I believe if the connection string is wrong, it will probably fail at this point. So hopefully if it, um, there we go. So it's saying code first migrations are enabled for project taskmaster tutorial, which is pretty good. Okay. And just to show you our um, databases, what do you think? Do you think the database has been created? You would be wrong. The database is not created at this point. And um, that little routine is just checking to see whether the database was there. Okay, so that's us finished setting up. Um, our entity framework on our application. Now, the steps I've just showed you here, you only need to do once per application. The subsequent steps I'm going to show you are basically a repeatable pattern that you would do multiple times throughout your application, but that set up there, if you follow those steps, you only have to do that once. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. So yeah, in part three, what can you expect? Well, you are going to create your status class. We're going to add the status class as a property to the DB context. We're going to create a migration and we're going to update our database.